Hey guys, today we're going to be going through the Three Doors Math problem from the movie 21. <laughs> Pretty cool video. Well, actually, you should probably just check it out because my buddy just posted this and I didn't even know how to do it until he did it. So check it out on our, uh, I think it's the cool playlist, cool math problem playlist. So anyways, back to the real subject of the day. After you watch that video, we're going to be going over the Objective C tutorial for the scanf function. Now the scanf function gives us a little bit more versatility with uh, basically user input. And so I'm going to show you in this example below. As we input a number, so we've got an NS log that simply puts out what number between 1 and 100 would you like to start with? We're going to insert 20 and we're going to hit return. So then it runs our program similar to the intro to the looping that we had written in the previous tutorial. So what we're going to do with that is uh, we're going to start from the basics. After I've shown you how to do it, we're going to start from the basics, go back to the intro to looping, how we did that, and then run in and input the scanf function so you can see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that uh, part of the equation, get rid of our x variable, and I think the only other thing I changed was the y equals x, and we're going to change that back to 5. So if you've watched the previous tutorial, which I think, uh, I don't remember the name, but look up intro to looping, intro to for looping, you'll see it there. We've got a basic loop that we've got, uh, we've set our y to 5, we've set uh, y is less than or equal to 45, and then we're adding 2 to whatever number the y starts from. So in this case, we've started at 5, and we're adding 2 to it each time. Now with the scanf, we're going to give the user the ability to input a number and then from that number, which uh, we're going to change to x here, we're going to add 2 to each time up to 100. Less than or equal to 100. So, we've got to establish a new variable, which we're going to label as x. Alright, so after we put in the x variable, we're going to simply put a statement on the screen. So as you saw from down here, what number between 1 and 100 would you like to start with? We'll start with. So we're going to simply put nslog, and in this case we're going to put uh, the statement that we prompt them with, what number between 1 and 100 would you like to start with. Over and then we're going to follow it up with the uh, scanf function. So we're going to simply write scanf, and this is going to open up the doors for the user to put in the, the uh, integer that we, we asked for. So the prompt it with what number between 100, 1 and 100 would you like to start with? And then we're going to open it up to scanf, simply followed by an open invitation to, let me see here, let me see here, an integer. And by allowing them to put in an integer, we give them the ability to set a certain amount of parameters, anything that they'd like to put in based on what the prompt is. So then we're going to assign what they put in to a variable. And that's why we have the x established up here. And so we're going to assign it by putting an and symbol and then the variable that we'd like. Now we have to put in the and symbol, um, which uh, actually we'll get into in a later date, which is the and symbol is an operator um, that, uh, like I said, is a little bit more detailed than where we're at right now. It's an operator that goes into pointers and all this stuff, so we'll detail that a little bit later. So from, for right now, we're just going to put an and, and then the variable that you'd like to assign it to. So the next, what we have to do next is go back over here and put a semicolon, because apparently I forgot that. And then we're going to go down to our loop. And this is the loop we developed in the previous tutorial. We're going to go y equals x in this case. So let me explain, explain the breakdown here. We're going to prompt the user right here with what number between 1 and 100 would you like to start with. Our scanf function gives them the ability to actually input a number. And so with that number, we're going to assign the number that they give us to the x variable. So in this case, as we did the test below, we put in 20. So now x equals 20. So then it goes down to our looping statement and it says y equals x. So in this case, it's going to be y equals 20. So without us actually having to go in behind the code and put y equals 20, we're just going to put y equals x in this case. So now it follows through with our intro to looping, which, you know, if you uh, haven't seen the previous tutorial, go back, check it out. 
but it goes through and it validates the statement. If the statement's uh, true or if it still fits within the parameters, it's going to output what we requested. So let's double check that this works and uh, we'll continue on to the next tutorial, hopefully. All right, we'll run that and we should get the prompt that says what number, which is perfect. We're going to go over here and insert 12. And uh, just a side note, when you enter your integer here, make sure you push the return key and not the enter key. The enter key isn't going to do anything for you, but the return key should give you exactly what you're looking for. So in this case, 12 is now inserted into our loop up here, and as long as it's less than or equal to 100, we're going to add 2 to it and print it to the screen. So it should, yeah, like we've got here, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so on and so forth. So let's run it one other time and make sure it works. So we get the prompt, and this time we're just going to put in like 87. So we should get 87, 89, 80, you know, 91, all the way up to 100 or less than 100. And there we go. Since we're an odd number, the last number that it outputs is 99. So that's kind of the basics of the scanf function that gives us a little bit more usability within Objective-C so we can input numbers and see the relationship between the input and uh, what's out, uh, output into the screen. So hopefully that helps you as you guys are developing these. Now keep in mind this is something that we're not going to actually use you know, down the fu in the future when we develop these complex programs. This is more of like a learning type atmosphere where you guys can venture into inputting so it's not us working behind the scenes and you know establishing our variables and setting them. We're gonna set them on the screen to help uh, help us progress a little bit further. So hopefully that helps. Uh, the next tutorial we're gonna be going through uh, I think some nested for loops. So that'll give us the ability to run the program several times with the same equation. So stay tuned. Don't uh, don't forget to check out the three doors video and uh, check out some of those cool math problems. I might uh, might try doing one of those sometime. Alright, we'll see you guys later.